Everyone knows that Cubs fans are assholes because they come from Naperville and other shitty suburbs like Addison and Skokie and wherever. That's as far as I got. (laughs) (laughs) And then Kyle put on his Cubs hat. Should be a real fan, a White Sox fan, because they're poor and they're from the South Side, so it means more. <laughs> Anyways, here we go. How you're good with words, you know that, man? I think the gym is dumb. R- did Rachel was, walk in the room? Of course I've eaten a Baconator. Man, if you ain't doing CrossFit, you can get CrossFit. You're shuffle. right. A long burger's not the worst idea I've ever heard. That's your sitcom right there as a, as a, as a Mr. Fix-It-All who just can't fix his heart. We will not be defending Atlantic City. No accounting for taste. If it's something that somebody loves, let's try and celebrate it instead of uh, shitting on it. What'd you change it to? <laughs> What's this? I can't. Does it say suburbs? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the fucking suburbs. So that's great. <laughs> How, where did you get that? I got it made. <laughs> <laughs> I want Man. It. <clears throat> Oh, between Ultimate buying Fair weird weather. belts and and, yeah. <laughs> and commissioned hats, you might run out of money. <laughs> <laughs> I went broke on custom joke hats. <laughs> how did Kyle, budgets how did Kyle lose all his money? Accessories? Yeah, a lot of athletes buy chains. Well, not quite. <laughs> no, no, nothing precious about this. Just uh, uh, the I, 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 I'm guilty of being the most fair weather fan. Yeah, I, mean, I just. You're from somewhere, and you want to represent it, especially when you move away. So I'm like, oh, I, you know. My affinity for I don't care about baseball. I just that was I, yeah. I'm not from the South Side, and I've never taken my shirt off to fight an umpire, so I'm not going to wear a White Sox hat. <laughs> but I have I have sounds like you up, just called them. <laughs> I have barfed up and down Clark Avenue, so I'll wear a Cubs hat. <laughs> I've, I've thrown up all over Wrigleyville, so I can wear a Cubs hat by default. It has nothing to do with baseball. It has to do with how much, uh, <laughs> how much uh, old style I've taken in up and down uh, that whole and area through so. Boys Town and wherever else over there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've thrown up yeah. all over that region, but nobody goes down to nobody down goes down to Comiskey. Yeah, I'll call it Comiskey. Um, What's it called now? It's I, like what, pick whatever corporation owns it this yeah, year. Okay, I don't yeah, know. yeah, yeah, yeah. I will say, uh, for a short, I had a short dalliance with a woman that was from the South Side, and she's a hardcore Sox fan. And she nobody's goes, had a dalliance with anybody from the South Side. That is far too <laughs> fancy of a word to describe what you've done with this young lady. <laughs> We stuck our fingers in each other. And I was going to say, <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know three fingers covered in neon green relish is called a dalliance. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she saw my sport pepper. Uh, <laughs> but, Put it in your mouth. There's no ketchup on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gross. <laughs> um, I was like this. The old though. dipped beef. <laughs> Let me run it through the garden. That means she's unshaved. Oh. <laughs> I, uh, well, <laughs> I, deep uh, but dish, she was like, and wet. just to like, I think the real way did this out to, from her perspective, and one I think is actually fair, is she was like, when the Cubs, when we won the World Series, when the Sox won the World Series, the parade was like two blocks. And it didn't, yeah. It did, yeah, it would basically went around the stadium. But when the Cubs won, it went like basically around the lake and all the way around the whole city. And she was like, it's so shitty. And half of these people aren't real fans. So, yeah. Yeah. My r- biggest problem with Fairweather fans is two things. It's one that they show up only when it's good, but two is that they act like they know things when they haven't been around. It's a real like one up kind of dickhead thing. You know, like they're very, they seem to be knowledgeable when they haven't been paying attention or they, they yeah. act like they're knowledgeable. So that's really the most irritating thing is somebody talking out of their ass about something you care about. Like, uh, yeah. And I, and I, I'm 
nothing to do with sports. I wasn't raised with sports. Yeah. Cubs games are just fun. Yeah, because it's a great there's ballpark. Bars. There, there, it's a great ballpark. There's bars. There's restaurants. There's a lot of stuff to do around there. <clears throat> Going to a Sox game is if you come home without a stab wound and your wallet, that was a great day at the park. How is that attractive to want to go down there? <laughs> Versus, well, I, like, oh, I'm going to take my kids, you know, into the city. Oh, here's a l- wonderful bus and train line leading to this. Oh, let's go to see the a Sox game. Oh, they slashed our tires, and I'm I'm down a child from this trip. <laughs> like, I don't, I've never, I, and the stadium sucks too. And it's like, oh, a nearly vertical concrete wall you can perch on. Well, I would say that there is something about having maybe the best and, ballpark. Next also, to one of the worst ones, like, like I'm next also to one doing the-, the exact same thing you're talking about. Was just acting like I know. I've been to like two Sox games my whole life. I don't give a shit. Yeah. But <laughs> I have multiple. I've been to one Cubs game, mm-hmm. and it is a great fun ballpark. Like it just yeah. it nails it. It's I don't know what it is. But it's like everything that goes on there. There's so much fun shit mm-hmm. about it. Yeah. Uh, and I have multiple Yankee fr- fans, friends that are Yankees fans, and they're like, mm-hmm. a few of them have been like. Wrigley's the best ballpark. And, like, Yankee fans are fucking assholes and think everything yeah. they do. Yeah. So I, so there's something about maybe the best, funnest ballpark being next to something that should mostly be used for emergency condition situations. Yeah. That it's, is, it's, like, a little unfair. You know, like, look. It's a real, uh, like, as far as if FEMA needs to be headquartered in Chicago, you got a spot. It does yeah. have plenty of bathrooms. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and there are tunnel. There are tunnels underneath it used to house ruffians and and for yeah. extreme weather conditions. So and and I, I'm I'm making jokes. I don't know nearly enough about it down there. It just it's it's very. It is like every like you know when spring is here because a father and son team have taken their shirts off to fight an umpire at Sox Park. I uh, a real a real O'Doyle rules kind of very kinda. very much so. And yeah. but it's I mean the same goes for if, like you saw music. Like there's some oh. places that are so good. Like even if the band sucks, the place that you're seeing the music at is a great time. And so it's yeah. like, oh, you're not a fan of this band, but yeah, but they're playing at like say the Gorge up in Washington, where it's yeah, that place it's, is it's insane. Like a, yeah, it's an outdoor amphitheater. Behind it is is it the Columbia River that's back there? The Columbia River Gorge. Yeah, it's part of that. I, could, I think. Yeah, I could see that being one of those. Like I'm not into that band, but going here is such a great time. Yeah. Well, to press another. Uh, episode the dave matthews band that we did an episode on they play there every they play there every you're like and i can imagine some people are like the music is fine but camping out here and having music and drinking beer is a blast i would skip my mother's funeral if dave matthews was playing at it i fuck that band i think the They're misfits terrible. could be playing at your mother's funeral and there's a good chance you wouldn't show. I, how dare you how dare you she <laughs> listens to this show does uh, she yeah oh that's nice you think my mom listens to it in heaven? Anyways, I don't know. Is all things comedy? What's their? What's their? Did they get what's my their, what? <laughs> I'll say this is my worst fair weather fan moment. Is that not long after I moved to L.A., my buddy who went to Arizona State is that Phoenix, right? ASU. I think that's the one. I think that's the one in Phoenix, and then there's University of Arizona, which I think is somewhere that's, else. But that's yeah, Tucson. But so ASU. I didn't know they're like a Big Ten or however they rank college football. But they were playing USC. They're a Division One team, and they're okay. like they're a big. Yeah, and I guess <laughs> I know. T- I think they're probably both Pac Ten. Yeah, of all the thing of, of how little I know about sports, football I know the least about, and. He's like, oh, we're going to go, like, my college, like, my old college is playing USC, and they're playing at the Coliseum in L.A. where they had the Olympics. Like, And he's like, I'm like, I don't know about football. I don't know if you want me to go. He's like, it's, it's, we're just going to get drunk at 10 in the morning. I'm like, you got it, buddy. Yeah. And so I went in this packed stadium. Like, I didn't realize people travel for college Insanely. Football. Imagine if you supported, like, just any other college program with that much fervor. Like, like, imagine if you just followed like a like a college, like, oh, you're getting a psychology degree, like that's, oh, oh man, I'm gonna get like a non athletic program. <clears throat> yeah, let me get a sweatshirt. Let me get excited about your education. But no, nah, it's just sports. And if you break an ankle, they want to put you down like a racehorse. <laughs> so <clears throat> we go, and we're obviously uh, sitting how about in a Cornell section now in their hospitality and hotels program this yeah, year. Yeah, like, huh? <laughs> maybe maybe uh, we wouldn't be. Uh, 
Like we got slow, a future Hilton slow, man in our looks. <laughs> so maybe we a, wouldn't be slowly losing our first world status as a nation if that was the case. <laughs> but so we're in this Arizona state section, and I didn't realize people came from Arizona to go to this game. I'm just like, ah, oh, it's like people alma mater. And so we're watching, and we're getting drunk, and they were doing all right, but then they started losing. And I'm like, well, I don't like losers, so I just started rooting for USC. I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> It started you openly. You fucking suck. Yeah, I started openly <laughs> mocking the people around me. Like, look what you're cheering for. Get your shit together. Your team suck. Like, I, I thought it was funny. I thought it was. I mean, that's I got, hilarious. It's I also no, like, yeah, no. Elite. My buddy's like, sit down. These people spent a lot of money to come here this weekend. <laughs> like, well, if they can afford to spend well, a lot of money dumber, to travel yeah. to a football game, they're probably not someone I'm too physically worried about. Well, yeah. especially if they're from Arizona. You want a tough Shout subject? out to Polly Casillas, by the way. He was a great wreck for the opening. He was uh, uh, Polly yeah. Pelagroso is great. He's Pelagroso, too sorry. Fe- yeah. We'll do an episode on Phoenix. I'm ge- in the power rankings of what we've had trouble defending. <laughs> it's going to be between Dave Matthews and the Kardashians. I think Phoenix is going to be. Oh, you think it's, it's the <laughs> municipality? Yeah. It's the municipality of. <laughs> it's gonna. It's gonna be a tough one. Um, but yeah. I think Poly- a, yeah, Poly- he's a, he was fantastic. awesome. He was great. Yeah, he's too. Uh, he's too so. Uh, yeah. But so that was my case of being fair weather, and I just I you know occasionally you go to a Cubs game because it's summertime and you drink an overpriced beer. As a kid, I got like Harry Carey. We got seats underneath the like the radio broadcast booth, and Harry Carey, true to the legend, absolutely shit faced. Came barreling out of the sound booth. Like, I remember as a kid, like, him hitting the railing over the fan. Booth, like, Harry! And, like, hit the railing. Like, I don't know him. Like, somebody, like, holding on to him so he just didn't spill into the bleachers. Like, he was he was that guy. So yeah. for that memory, I'm, I'm grateful. That's awesome. I will uh, say, if you have never seen it, everyone, you two included as well, Look up the YouTube clip of Norm McDonald talking about Bob Barker calling a Milwaukee Brewers game. It is maybe the funniest thing I have ever seen because he's he'll be like just ah short grounder out to third. He's like man, look at the cans on that chick. Anyways, gets it to the <laughs> gets Bob it out Barker? to the easy Wait, first. Bob Barker was saying this. Bob Barker is the voice of the Milwaukee Brewers. Like he calls their radio games. Bob Barker from Price. No, is I'm right. sorry. Not Bob Barker. Um, Bob, Bob Euchre. Uh, Euchre. Thank you. I'm sorry. Um, excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> also like fun. Bob Barker. <laughs> there was. A, I used to listen to a radio show. Bob Euchre worked. is the voice of Milwaukee. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I apologize. When, but when look I it worked. up. It's it's a great watch on YouTube. It's a great YouTube clip. The old school announcer. Like there was uh, this radio oh. show I used to listen to when I worked like at a gas station in the mornings. And so I listened, like, the only morning radio I care about was, they were called Bill and Wendy, and they were on Q101. This also ties into Fairweather fandom in a way. But they would always just play clips of Harry Carey, drunk, trying to say Japanese baseball players' names. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely blasphemous. But you know this is a good play. But him just drunk. He's like, that's a high pot pie in center field. Like, he said pot pie. He did say pot pie, right? He said pot Come pie. Come on down to Harry Carey Steakhouse, <laughs> the only steakhouse with me, Harry Carey. <laughs> <laughs> but speaking of, but that was they were the morning radio show. It was like an adult contemporary station that was then going to, uh, that was then turning into Q101, which was like one of the four. That and K Rock were like one of the forefront like alternative rock stations in the country. Back when that mattered, like if you got your music played on that channel, like it would go nationwide. Yeah. But they were gonna they knew they were gonna be replaced by Man Cow. You know, that cultural icon. Fuck. Yeah. But so when they knew that, they kind of like knew they were on the way out. So all they did was like make fun of all this alternative music that was coming in. <laughs> And it was some of the best radio because they would just sing a lot. Like Creed was considered like a good alt rock back at the beginning. That was like, yeah. that was still like, it's a punchline now, but you have to remember at the time it was still, oh, this is like a good band. There was yeah, no and this is, that, that, that is like, that is like Fairweather fan. Like, yeah. Cut, and anything cut, that is sizzling has Fairweather fan. We're talking a lot about sports, but anything yeah. that is like hot at the moment, whether it be a, 
like Turnstile is the new like hardcore band. Oh you know, yeah, you know, like and I I like them, but uh, the amount of people showing up to these shows that I have like m- that are my age that I don't I don't think really were invested in this kind of subculture when they were younger is a There's, little it's a little weird and mm-hmm. not to I'm not trying to judge like whatever you're welcome, but it's a little bizarre. This is it's it's the antithesis of the show. Let everybody enjoy it, but I knew. <clears throat> I'm not a hardcore guy. I'll, I'll listen to some of it here and there, but I know Turnstile is yeah. now the. Uh, you've been selected to be. You're okayed by the populace. Yeah, like I don't think the Turnstile fans are like digging deep. I don't think they're going to like. Oh, also, sick of it all. I love and Gorilla Biscuits. Like, there's yeah. a guy. I, 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 I'm I fine would say they, I would say they're the band that like people are like listening to. They're the the most. I knew well that. Known, I get. I knew and I that. like them too. But like, yeah, well, they're good. I mean. Good stuff they are good. gets recognized, but yeah. I remember it was last year. And it was somebody I don't want to throw them under the bus, but somebody that's more of a about. okay. But we're not, we're not we're not trying to shit talk actual people like we don't. But yeah. I'm just somebody that's more indicative of like an of the moment type individual. Like oh, I'm all sore for us. man. I was in the pit at, at Coachella for Turnstile. I'm like, well, that band's over. <laughs> <laughs> like I was like, <laughs> okay, like that was like that was the barometer of like, well, they're done. Like you may yeah. as well make a Taco Bell commercial. <laughs> you get, get cash in, get your money. <laughs> like no one's gonna hate uh, you for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In ten years, you can do the nostalgia tour. And but I was that idiot that found Green Day in '93, and then they came out with Dookie in '94. I'm like, these guys are fucking posers. All these punks. Like yeah, I was yeah. Good. I, had, I had eight. <laughs> how how early you get to shit? Like it's also so like uh, I guess I'm familiar with the fair weatherness stuff like more from a music perspective like yeah. when i was young because like i didn't have like a cool cousin who lived near a big city who would like get this kind of stuff or like yeah because there was no internet you know so whatever was on the radio was what i was kind of at a whim to mm-hmm. till like mid high school and then my friends started listening to punk music but i was already kind of like i'm gonna be a metal head or whatever you know so i kind of and then i yeah. like kind of swerved back in and out of both but like I guess now it just all happens so fast. That's why everybody is less tribal. Like, you can be into 30 different things, you know, like... That's a great way of putting it, yeah. Because when you're younger and, like, <clears throat> you find something, you get real pre- protective of it because you're trying to stand out. You're trying to have your identity. To, like, you're, yeah, because you're, you're, you're just a kid, and then you start getting to pick and choose what kind of person you want to be. And if you yeah. find something that's that somebody else doesn't know about... <clears throat> Feels yeah, good. You, you, you want to hoard it. And I, I don't think yeah. that exists as much anymore. Well, which, which might be probably, a good thing, might be a bad thing. I don't know. I think it leads to maybe less taste, but it's a good thing in a lot of ways overall, just because more exposure to people being like just less ignorant to things. You know, like yeah. uh, my Dulce told this story once. I thought it was like the funniest thing ever. Uh, she was in some like club in Atlanta and. Uh, Smells like teen. So the DJ played "Smells Like Teen Spirit" when she was like in mm-hmm. high school, and everybody like freaked out except her yeah. cousin, who was like this guy who was like, "What is this song?" Because I guess he was like <laughs> not from the suburbs, you know, like, yeah. and and he was like, "This shit goes hard." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I think I'm, I mean I'm I'm kind of like clobbering it together. But she told this story once. I was like, "This is the funniest thing I ever heard." Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm. I do. Miss the newness, <clears throat> or like the, it, because like now you could just you heard you heard something you could just look it up and you can find it. Yeah, but there was something special when one person kind of opened the door for you, like, "Hey, psst, come here, come here, check this out." Like that. That's my penis. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. Well, that you know, <laughs> it's new. It's new. I've never <laughs> seen it's, someone it's other than my yeah. own. <laughs> but as far as the fair weather, the yeah. <laughs> Charlie. <laughs> What is what was that? What? I think it was a buzzer of the game. Oh, okay, I'm like it was so faint. I'm like, is that the sound of a somebody saying shh? <laughs> oh, <laughs> foul balls. And Kanane clanks uh, another one off the rim. <laughs> but uh, well, I mean that's that's my mostly it was just me being a dick at that ASU game. It's fun. I I think. We'll, we'll get into the good and the bad in a second, but before we get there, I, I do think, here's the thing. I like sporting events, you know, like, mm-hmm. if they're uh, most of the time. And I've had I've gone to yeah. a few really fun ones. One of the funnest things I ever 
went to. I went with Chelsea Hood and Sam Evans. Mm -hmm. Sam and I were in Milwaukee playing the club. And then the Packers and the Bears were playing on Sunday night at Lambeau. Okay. And that is like just an occasion that like it's an event you want to see even if you don't like sports because it is fucking <laughs> yeah. nuts. People are going yeah. crazy. It was the wildest game and yeah. everyone was so fun, like drunk and really hardcore Packers fans and Bears fans, but everyone being like, ah, suck my ass. You know, like it was all. But they weren't, they weren't see, brawling. All, <clears throat> they no weren't brawling. Fighting. Like just like a great time. And okay. eventually the Packers started putting it on them and like, yeah. and ran away with it. But uh, Tommy McNamara told me once he was there, he went up for a game and he was wearing a Bears jersey, and this woman, like, and the Bears just got the shit beat on, but this, like, little sweet Wisconsin was lady was just like, well, I'll give you some free cheese curds since you made the trip up. <laughs> 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 yeah. That's, okay, that's the kind of stuff. See, but, so and that's, like, fair like, weatherness to me, like, in a sense of, like, fair weather of interest, not, like, rooting for one or the other, really, more like me going not, to that event. <clears throat> Not allowing yourself to become a violent human being because a group of strangers didn't perform the way you wanted them to. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Like Dodger, like Dodger Stadium is another place. It's a great, like it's a great stadium. It's an old stadium. You're looking out at the mountains. But Dodger fans, I mean, there's a loyalty there of like that's Chavez Ravine is. There's like yeah. that culture that like the like the Latino culture and like oh you took our land for this team. It's our team. We don't get yeah, jerseys. Come. We get face tattoos. <laughs> yeah. And a buddy was there with like a Bulls jersey on. Like, not even the same sport. Somebody's like, what the fuck's that, dude? He's like, it's basketball. <laughs> Why are you mad about basketball? Yeah. And I remember, the they were. I went to a game. They were playing the Angels. So kind of like. Little, yeah, it's, like regional, it's weird regional the, rivalry. The closer you get together, the stronger the rivalry is. Oh. You know? It's like, like it's insane. And so there's Texas like, Oklahoma is one of the craziest football events you'll ever see in your life. Really? Because yeah, like, they call it the Red River like, Shootout. Well, this these were like Dodger fans, like face tattooed Dodger fan. And then there's like a nice dad, Orange County dad, with his kids with their Angels gear. <laughs> oh God! And they're just like, "You suck! Fuck you!" And he's like, "Oh come, <laughs> come on, kids is all part of it. You can give it back." Like, Fucking drop dead! He's like, "All right, that's enough. That's that's enough. That's okay, guys. I, I got my I got my kids here. I got my kids." Here. Okay. <laughs> Look, I have a Sonata. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, well, why don't we uh, why don't we go to a commercial break and we'll come back with our next segment, the good and the bad. What do you say, gang? In the red corner, weighing Play in ball. at his felt, 135 oh. pounds, Different Kyle sport. Sweet Tickles Canade. 135? Thank you. Yeah. And in the blue corner, coming in at a burly 295, <laughs> Shane Sugarfist Torres. Sugarfist. That's the dalliance you were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I think I'm down to like 250 right now, so I'm feeling pretty good. Good for you. All muscle. Thanks. All muscle. All hustle. Hmm. All right. <laughs> that, that felt so flat with both Charlene and I. <laughs> oh, kiss my ass. Where's your sound effects on that one? <laughs> I'm surprised oh. you didn't get audio of some guy yelling something obscene at a Latin man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just... <laughs> Play ball! Jews! Oh, okay. I was pretending like in Sox Park. All right. Um, the good and the bad. What's okay? So we know what the bad is about fair weather fans. We've just got, you know, and, and again, like, I, I, I want to break away from the just the sports thing. We were mentioning music. I want, are, movie, are movie fans that bad? I think. Oh, I, I mean, is good. anybody mad that somebody's like, oh, I enjoyed Marvel movie? I don't think I think maybe Star Wars people. I, I don't. don't I don't know of any cases of somebody. I don't think they gatekeep. And I could yeah, be well, very wrong, but I know I would uh, like I know they're vocal when they don't like something, but it still seems like mm -hmm. they go see it. Yeah, you know, like is is they're, yeah, they're more shitty fans than they are. Yeah, what, they're very what, vocal about. They're like they're like like hardcore sports fans in that way. Like at least yeah. I don't see a lot of 
I guess a Fairweather fan equivalent in the movie world would be the person who's like, yeah, I see all of them, but I don't geek. I don't know the the nerd culture. You know, like, yeah, if, if like a hot lady all of a sudden wants to start wearing a Star Wars t shirt, they're like, "You weren't around when Return of the Jedi <laughs> which, was released." Which speaks on to that group of men's like suaveness with women. <laughs> what do you, do you Here, have? Here's something I could talk to her about. I better exclude her from it. <laughs> do you gatekeep anything? I think oh. all comedians are guilty of a little gatekeeping. Because we we can all spot we can all spot a tourist or somebody that's using stand up to like leapfrog to something else so they're not. I mean, paying respect. Yeah, I would say I I do it with comedy, like with stand up. I like I wouldn't say I'm a a, a gate a gatekeeper, but I w- I will say I'd be like I think this person's like just here for a little. I think they're a tourist. I think they're here for a little bit, and yeah. I don't I don't make friends with them. You know, like I don't yeah. like, and I'm a nice person. I think, but I fucking. Fuck them if they want to just come in and like milk the thing for an Instagram clip, like yeah. Some people but that's put enough fair effort into this to care about it. I think Fairweather no. fandom is maybe like oh, it's when, and this I'm, I I wish I was better about this. I'm not saying I'm right, but I know I'm like this when <clears throat> people only like the certain kind of comedy that's that somebody else told them is good. Oh, you know, it's and the I'm worst. Not saying, I'm not saying that like, and like. Like I'll just, I'm just, i not saying like Joe Rogan gatekeeps, but I think people that listen to Joe Rogan think that as long as you've been gilded by that show, that makes you a good comic. And if you haven't been, then you're excluded from the idea There is a cult being, of personality around big things, no matter what they are. Just, just like The Tonight Show was. Like, it's yeah. this stamp of validation, which I don't... And that's not even on... I'll have my issues with people, but like, that's not even on... Joe Rogan or the Tonight Show or anything. It's just with the general public now. Well, because this person said it's good, I will now view it. Whereas they won't go search out stand up elsewhere. Not to yeah. say that there's not it's not completely saturated and tough and not to shit wade a lot of places. Yeah. 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 yeah to wade but, through it. But go you're not going to your stand up but who is going to a comedy club every weekend to see whatever act is there. You know? Very few people. But the I will say this to your point. My issue with this stuff was like it was like Rogan is like the biggest thing in the world. The Tonight Show was the biggest thing in the world. There are other big mediums that can kind of like you know Mario Kart arrow somebody yeah. into success when they're on. Uh, the problem I don't have any problems with that. Like fucking get you know like make your dinner however you're going to make it as a performer. Yeah. My issue with it is the listener of that, whatever medium or viewer of it, starting to talk like they know about comedy. When they're actually going to the mm. biggest thing in the world, like, you have no <clears throat> yeah, you, you have no sense of, like, what is new if you're, maybe not no sense, but, like, you're not a, a proprietor or an intellectual person when it comes to things if you're taking it from the largest source that talks about it. Like, that's like, yeah. we're all drinking from the same tap at that point. Chicken you know? tikka masala must be shitty because Denny's doesn't serve it. Like, yeah, exactly. there's like, so much, there's so much else out there. Yeah, and there's ways to get it. It's like, and that's like, uh, I, I think about that quite a bit. That it's like, you, like, what people upon tip, like, I was watching some, uh, Video. It was Rise Against. That may have been, you know them from they're from Chicago. Oh yeah. And I saw and I saw the video, and it was like it was just on or whatever playing through a mix. And I was like, I read one of the YouTube comments, and some guy just wrote, "If you don't know Rise Against, you don't know rock." And I'm like, what does this mean? And also, That's, they are a yeah. massive fucking band. Like, and this guy was saying it in the context of like, I'm gonna see them in a 100 seater. You know, like. And that's like, well, so that's the opposite of Fairweather fans is toxic fan bases. Because I remember, yeah. At, but when my old apartment, I was like going, I, I was walking back. There was like three buildings, and my neighbor that I knew was having like a party. Yeah. I was like, oh, hey, what's up, man? He's like, oh, hey, how's it going? He's like, hey, it's my neighbor Kyle. He's a comedian. Somebody just goes, Tom Segura, get the fuck out. Like, <laughs> all right. Yeah. Why did, <laughs> what? Why would you? Why would you even <laughs> say that? <laughs> and that has nothing to do. I know Tom. I like Tom, but like, oh man, that's your fan base, or at least some of it. Yeah, not all of I, it. I I would not yeah. want to. I would not want 
people that like what I do to have that attitude towards other people that do the thing that I do. Yes. And I don't think Tom definitely doesn't. For no, one. no, no. It's, it has nothing to do with him. It has nothing to do with it. But it's that like broed out. That's like toxic fandom where it's yeah. the opposite of Fairweather fans. It's like toxic fandom. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's like a cult of personality and then Fairweather fans are like, I want. I don't want either of them. Like, like, no. like, yeah. And and I could see one driving the other to get irritated. Yeah, know. that's. Uh, it's. <laughs> I've been in relationships where one person has been a hardcore fan, and I have been a fair weather fan mm-hmm. of the of, of, of the, the relationship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little, a little lopsided love over there. <laughs> Shane, the lopsided love Torres. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I do, yeah. But, we, I mean, we have to say, you know, like, I think we like, you know, as two performers, we both want to like our fan bases, mm-hmm. but you can't pick them. Sometimes there's going to no. be people that, you know, like, I love a lot, most of them, but sometimes every once in a while there's a guy who's going to take up two hours of my time when other people are trying to take pictures. Well, okay, we're right here. Uh, let's go to the research that Charlene has so uh, graciously compiled for us. That our Colorado Springs Business Journal, the most respected business journal of all, the Colorado Springs Aye. Business Journal. We uh, call it the Golden Press, where I'm from. <laughs> Fairweather fans can boost sales for sports-focused businesses. So. A diehard fan, like, all right, I'm just in with this team. They're not buying new merch every year. They're not getting, you know, they're making it visible. They're making, they're bolstering. And this is in terms of a team, but maybe in terms of, like, you want more, in my head, you want more people to like a team. Bands you get territorial about. And, like, I've, I'm still guilty today where I've... This is my special thing. Yeah. Even, yeah. Like, 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 like death metal logos. Like, all of a sudden, like, Rihanna's wearing a death metal T-shirt. Oh, I, I like, hate it. I hate it, but, like, I all, but I don't need I to be upset about it. Yeah, I, but I'm I do hate mad, it. I'm not mad, but I'm just like, all right, you're just, you're just mowing through culture. You're just mowing yeah. through culture and spitting and it not, out. And, and not that's... absorbing it. You're like an Instagram reel. I'm gonna, you're swiping left on a, a, outfits it, or whatever, yeah. Influ- yeah, influencer culture that's just chewing up something that somebody cared about and spitting it out. Yeah. Which, and w- that's Fairweather fandom, and we're trying to defend it here. But with sports, yeah, I have a Cubs well, hat. Other I'm we from Chicago. Yeah, I have, I have a Cubs hat. I'll, you know, I don't, I also don't understand, the, like, why do I have to know everything about the thing? You do it's not. It's a piece, it's merchandise. Yeah. And also, at the end of the day, it's kind of making the owner of a sports franchise a richer person. Like, we're not helping anything. Like, no, it's all – I mean, that's – it's a joke I had before about, like, yeah, I wear hats because I'm bald. But somebody, like, wants to grill me about the Cubs hat. And I'm just like, oh, you're wearing Levi's? Who's your favorite prospector? Oh, you don't know the history that. of Levi's? Yeah. Oh, you don't know how the copper rivets got in there? Like, why is that the acceptable – I don't even think they know if rivets are part of a pants. <laughs> I think oh, you're right. Probably- <laughs> I got – Rachel got me – uh the Nike Michael Jordan shoes, which is the, the most Nike fun. Michael Jordan shoes. It is the <laughs> the Air Jordans. It's the most. The thing fun. there's a movie out about right now. <laughs> no, it's the most fun thing to do to bother sneaker people because they're like, "Oh, cool shoes." I'm like, "Yeah, they're my Michael Jordans," and uh, and to watch dudes who uh. care about shoes get upset about something. <laughs> fills me with joy. It fills me with joy. And they're nice. Look my Michael my, Jordans. Look at my shoes. Look at my Michael Jordans. <laughs> Sometimes I cut the lawn in my Michael Jordans. <laughs> so I go out and I wear my Michael Jordans, you know, and I get complimented by guys. But then I immediately have to be like, my girlfriend bought them for me. Because I'm like, don't ask me questions. I don't know what the colorway is. I don't know what era. I just know yeah. that they're nice. And I... Saw people wearing them, and I'm like, oh, I don't think I could ever be like that kind of shoe guy. And Rachel's like, yeah. And then she got them for me, and now I treat them nicer than because they're nice shoes. They spent she spent but they're money. Sho- they're, 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 they're shoes that go on your feet that touch the ground, and I'm terrified of screwing them up. Polly Casillas, as you mentioned, Polly, yeah. great comic out of Tucson, first guy I met who had 
just shoes that he'd put on for the show and then take them off to drive home. <laughs> I'm like, you can't wear shoes to drive. He's like, no, it creases them. <laughs> I mean, here's the thing. It's a, uh, it's great that they like, because sometimes it's just somebody being like, I like your shit, you know, like, mm-hmm. and that, and that's it. They don't turn it into a, a fucking uh, chat oh, forum. No, but you it's know, like, breach the contract of guys complimenting each other are those shoes. That has been almost every time I wear them. So yeah. like, like those Jordans, man. I like those Air Force. Well, like it's always, it's never any other item. Like imagine doing that. Some like, hey, dude, I, that's a cute jacket. Like you couldn't do that, <laughs> but the shoes are okay. I will say, last night I actually did do. That. I didn't cute jacket it, but I did. I was leaving a show, and this guy had on a Rivington Street guitar shirt, and I was like, yeah. oh, cool shirt. And he goes, you cool shirt. I was wearing a Diarrhea Planet shirt. He <laughs> <laughs> like, you cool we were, shirt. Yeah, that's what he was. He did it as a joke. It was fun. Like, you oh, know, okay. like, but yeah, yeah. But it was like, I was like, all right, this is a, this is kind of where I should. Uh, that was where I, that's where I would put your shoes uh, comments at. Like, yeah. if, if you if I was like, nice shoes, Kyle, you'd be like, you cool shoes too. Let's get out of here. <laughs> but it also to go to the fair weather thing. It is kind of like a nod, like. It's a little bit of like a, you know, if it's a band t-shirt, it's like, oh, you kind of got to like, in a way, you're like, oh, I think I know about this person a little bit. Like, you like that music. I like that music, too. It's like being little kids. Like, you like this? I like this. We should be friends. Yeah. And so I think some of the fair weather stuff can water down that allegiance, and that's why people get mad about it. Like, I I don't think Rihanna listens to Cannibal Corpse recreationally. (laughs) No. Like I don't think I don't, I don't think Deicide is playing in the Bentley. Yeah, yeah. But those logos, I, it's it was always cool, scary looking stuff. Yeah, it's, it's cool that want, they like the art at least. You know, like of the stuff yeah. you like. Yeah, and yeah. that's why. But also think about how many, like, if you went to like punk and metal shows, and one rabble rouser just showed up in a Backstreet Boys T shirt to be like, "What's up, nerds?" Like just to be funny. Yeah. Oh, I'd be like, right. Tit for tat, you know. He's the fun guy here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This guy, this guy discovered irony before the rest of us. <laughs> Let's find the good in Fairweather fans. Fairweather fans can help boost a team's popularity and revenue. We all saw that. They can help boost a team's popularity and revenue. Sorry. A study by the University of Chicago. Oh, that's, that's a you, smart one. Is it a good one? It's Keep talking to me while I, I take in I this higher. <laughs> Shane's oh, going to try is... and not read out loud for a minute, so I guess I'll yeah. talk. Uh, <laughs> let's see if his, his lips this are going to be... This is like a PDF. Like, this is not an I article. I can't get through this. This is, a, this, is, this is like a real... This is an actual scientific study with research. This is not like a listicle that I can take in and just chop stuff I know, stuff but I was off. like, there's no way he's going to read without moving his lips. <laughs> Shane's a fair weather fan of reading. <laughs> I'm doing a buck a month this year, and I'm ahead. How many of you read, you fucking jackass? What did Curious George do this week? <laughs> <laughs> he pummeled to death the bald man in the hat. Oh. <laughs> Whoa. I didn't get that far in the franchise. I, uh, I'll say this. I, I hate you. <laughs> 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 you mean bastard. I didn't see you try to get into this. Well, you already made a video of you just sweating in a bookstore to promote this episode. And I didn't know I, wasn't, just- I was outside. <laughs> you just look panicked to be around the written words so much. <laughs> I just left the gym. I didn't know that. You're just in a bookstore sweating. I said it in the video. Oh, I didn't have a volume on it. I, was, I, looked, yeah, at it. Well, I then looked at it in bed. Maybe don't judge a book by its cover. <laughs> <laughs> ah, shame. I, uh, Again, our topic is fair certain. weather fans this week, and it's just turned into Kyle and I being <laughs> fair weather on each other with our friendship. Oh. Here's a fair weather fan. Yeah, like this is kind of related to it. Not like we got to stick hard on topic. You ever been around somebody that gets too familiar too quick? Like, oh. if, like, like you're making fun of somebody, and somebody else jumps in. Like, yeah, hey, you're ugly. Like, buddy, we just met you. <laughs> like, yeah. 
That's a. I think that's a version of fair weather. Kind of. Like, well, er, like, it also gets earn, corrected pretty quick with the wrong person. Sure, but it's like like it's a. It's some of it has to do with like earning the right to be. To share in the joy that somebody else is having, like Cubs won the World Series. I'm just I keep going to that as an example because it was a because big that's one. your experience with it, and, and that's the <clears> closest <throat> you've ever been to a fair weather sports fan. Yeah, and it's just like it's a team that's part of the city you grew up. Like it's the games on, you see the billboards, all that. Whether or not you actively participate, goes like it's still part of where you grew up. No, and it's or if, like, or if a band that like a band from your hometown, even if you don't like that kind of music, the regionality of it gets you. There are Exc- guys. There's a thing. There's a thing. With, there's, a thing with, there's a thing with like there are team. There are squad locally. Like no yeah. matter what it is, that you're. When I'm, so I'm from Fort Worth, which is next to Dallas, mm-hmm. and the Dallas Cowboys are like the biggest sports franchise in the world, maybe. Like value wise and all this other stuff. Yeah, if we ignore and soccer. they have. Yeah, they have so many Fairweather fans from other places and front runners. Yeah. So, like, a lot of people who are other big sports football fans will be like, Who, who's your team? And I'll be like, oh, the Cowboys. And they'll be like, uh, and I'll be like, I'm actually from there. And yeah. that's, there's always there's always a pass where like, okay, but still fuck you. And I'm like, yeah, fuck you too. You're from Philly. You're the dumbest yeah. people on earth. Well, think um, about it. If, if, not, if it wasn't for Fairweather fans, there wouldn't be the Olympics. <laughs> I'm not tu- I'm not tuning into pole vaulting, you know, regional yeah. pole vaulting. The Olympics is entirely fair weather fan bases from that country. That's like, a very oh, good point. Oh like- my god, we got the golden bobsledding. Tell me where bobsledding exists outside of every four years on your TV. You don't even know where they practice bobsledding. Yeah. But you get to be a fair weather fan and a fucking patriot every four years. That's yeah, the Olympics only exist because of fair weather fit. Yeah, and like oh, Mountain, and okay, they're over. Okay. <laughs> but I, I get what you. That's a very good point. Like fair people, like when the Olympics come around, the fair weather fandom speak is the same way. Like at the beginning of COVID, where somebody's like, "I talked to my uncle who works in the government, and they acted like they knew <laughs> things right away." You know? Yeah. You know, you know. And, well, I mean, shit. I mean, think about like warfare is based on fair weather fandom of being a patriot. You know. Like nobody, nobody knew, nobody knew jack shit about Ukraine. We should, we should talk up about until fair a year weather. ago. <laughs> we should talk now about now fair weather. Yeah, now everybody's got an opinion about like, well, we shouldn't be in Ukraine. Well, we got to be in Ukraine. I'm sorry. Eighteen months ago, what? How? What geopolitical movement were you paying attention to? Did you know they weren't the same country eighteen months ago? <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. Like, uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we should. <laughs> We talk about the patriotism of war. The the amount of yeah. fair weather fandom that happened after nine eleven from guys I went to high school with in Texas who like uh, enlisted moved a lot of merch moved a lot yeah. of merch. <laughs> Them tiny flags got sold and sold and sold. Uh, was David Cross at that bit about some guy being like after nine eleven being like, "Hello, ribbon money. Hello, flag money." <laughs> Oh, absolutely. It was, it was yeah. hand over fist. Yeah. I, I guess you can get anybody can be susceptible to fair weather fandom if you can get if you can get emotionally swept up in something, I guess is what it comes down to. Like Yeah. Which is kinda depending on the consequence of it, is kinda nice. You know, like can be kinda like it's if you leave it where you like initiate it, like if you and I go to a ball game and we root really loud for the Cubs and they lose and yeah. our day is not ruined after I'm fine with that for fair weather fandom. Like, yeah, you're like, not going to get a piece of my emotional well being because these millionaires didn't play this game as well as I thought they that would. That are paid by by this billionaire that are <laughs> and like, that, and that is, I was that dickhead before too because I'm like, I was the anti sports guy for a long time when I was like, I had to be cynical and contrarian and be like, oh, these guys like no, nobody's even from the city that you're watching play. You know, yeah, and I still do think it is weird that it's like just this assemblage of strangers that have no tie to the city, unless Most of they've the been time, there yeah. for a few years, yeah, yeah, or co- or college, like oh, so well, these 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 co- college athletes, which probably wouldn't have even gotten the chance to be at college if it wasn't for their athletic ability, and they will be disposed of very quickly, immediately. Yeah. Now they can get <laughs> finally started getting paid though, which is nice. Yeah, they get their money that, off. That kind of shit, all the merch that's sold, and none yeah. of it, like, anyway. 
There, I mean, that's like a, an argument's been around. But, you know, I, that's that's kind of where I'm at with my Fairweather fandomness is like, mm-hmm. I love my teams. Like, I love watching the Mavs and the Cowboys and stuff. But, like, but I kind of, I watch the game, and then if they lose, I'm sad for 10 minutes after. Not even sad, just kind of like, ah, yeah. well, fuck it. But if they win, I have a nice day. And I get to go, I'll, I'll drink a little more and have a little more fun. And that's also yeah. great. I get, I do understand people being offended of like, well, my grandfather and my father shared enjoying this team, and now they've shared yeah. it with me, and I'm going to sit there. Like, if somebody's just on their phone, not paying attention, that's how I feel about a comedy show or a band. They're like, oh, I've waited so long to see this band, and somebody's just in front of me talking to somebody else. I'm like, you could just fuck off if you're not here to yeah, see the band. Yeah, you can go to the like, back of the bar if you need to be. Yeah, there's yeah a, so yeah. I understand the anger towards them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't be a dickhead. Uh-huh. I was like, about it. yeah, I was watching this show and this guy was arguing with his girlfriend and she goes, why do you care so much about the bulls? And he goes, cause it's most of my relationship with my father. And you're <laughs> exactly. Like, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you're like, you're like, well, for some people it is a lot more and that's okay. You know, like any, any interest in football got squashed so early in my life. Please. My dad, like we're not sports. Like, even when the Bulls were on, like even when the Bulls were winning championships, we weren't paying attention. But I do like listen. I I'm the reason there's written exams in gym class. Like that's how physically uncoordinated I am. They're like, we got to give this idiot at least a C plus and see if he remembers the rules of the game and he can write them down. I had to watch a football game and like write what happened to prove that I saw. It. And so my dad dropped me off at my grandfather's house, a Marine, till the day he died. We were on vacation once, and my mom would, like asked him, like, why are you pa- like, why are you packing up? He was folding his dirty clothes. <laughs> and I had to sit and watch this with my Marine grandfather and, like, write out, now see what happened there. Now that was three yards. If it would have been five, he was so meticulous about everything, and I'm falling asleep writing down what happened. And now he looked because I was falling. And he's like, and now rewrite what you wrote so it's in good penmanship for your gym teacher. I'm like, I hate everything about this fucking sport. I hate NFL. I hate football. I never give a shit. The only fo- – that, that ASU Whoa. game was the only team, only football game I'd gone to in my whole life. Up until a few years ago when my sister moved to Los Angeles. And she's like, I got tickets to go see the Rams. I'm like, all right. Well, Tegan's always down for a fun time. And I did. I had yeah. a great time going there. Yeah. So you can like – and now I think like Fairweatherdom is like about spectacle. You know, like even yeah. in sports now, like there's always – you know they do at Mets games now? And they bring in yeah. a relief pitcher. They pay. They play a comic for one minute from Gotham. Uh, they call it the Mets Comedy <laughs> Minute. I swear – so it's all like – it's all like spectacle and like yeah. entertainment. Like so, like even if you are a, a Fairweather fan or not a fair, not even a Fairweather fan, but somebody has no interest in it, it's still an event. Like people still go to Super Bowl parties who don't care about football because they're going to eat dip and talk about the commercials. Like, yeah, it's like, and, and, and yeah. I do too. And, and it, so they're appealing to Fairweather fans. They know yeah. they can't just have yeah. hardcore only fans have diehard it. fans. They yeah they it's a business and they need just like this uh, SB Nation article they need all these other people to come in to funnel money into it. I've never I've been to Soldier Field once in my life for a Chicago Sting game soccer. That's what I went and saw soccer. I've never saw a football game in Chicago. I never saw the Bulls play. I've, ne- I've never seen I've seen one professional basketball game. 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 Chi- a game. That's how I pronounce it when I'm unfamiliar with it. In China. It's the only basketball game I've ever seen. Was was I went to it in China. I went to a professional basketball game. That is so you. It's like it makes me sick to my stomach. Oh no, I, I take that probably... I take that back. Valentine's Day. We went to a Trailblazers game. Rachel and I did. It was her idea. And it was and it was a, it was a good time. It was a really good time. Yeah, fun. Because I'm also over my own bullshit. I was a yeah, dickhead for so where, long yeah. and continuing through parts of my life. But now it's just like, oh, this is a this is a giant stadium of a bunch of people all trying to have a good time. 
I like good times. They like. I'm not a fair weather fan of good times. Diehard fan of good times. <laughs> That sounds like a Bud Light commercial. Look, I'm not a fan with a fan of good times. No way. I'm, I'm a good time loyalist. <laughs> good times till I die, baby. We'll be right back after this commercial break <laughs> from our sponsor, the U.S. Marine Semper Fi. <laughs> And Cracker Jacks. I don't care if Kanane ever comes back, cause it's Whoa, root, root, I'm root for the Cubbies. If they don't win, it's a shame. For it's one, two, three strikes, you're out at the old podcast game. <laughs> okay. It's a long way to go for like a real shitty word substitution. Okay. First caller. I don't know what to say about this, but here we go. <laughs> What's the title? Hey, guys. I uh, love the podcast. I um, just want to talk about Vegas real quick because, holy shit, I just flew through the Vegas airport instead of uh, the airport I normally fly through. And, uh, man, it is just absolutely awful. I <laughs> didn't even go into the actual part of Vegas. Uh, I have before. Didn't care for it. Uh, I feel like there's far too much puke in just out and about that I'm uh, happy for. And when I went into the bathroom at the Vegas airport, the only available urinal had puke in it and all over it and around it. And I walked out and said to my girlfriend, you can't make me go back to Vegas. Um, God damn it, I fucking hate Vegas. But I guess if you like Vegas, cool. But Jesus Christ, it's fucking I'm terrible to be there. I don't know. Maybe I just, uh, maybe I'm a donor. I don't know. All right. Oh, God. Podcast. Bye bye. Meow, meow. Did this call come in today? Yep. <laughs> After we asked for opinions. Yep. Well, <laughs> I mean, I, I think guess- we all feel like there's not a lot to be said about that. <laughs> it's, it's a bit of a hotline. You know, it's a bit of a. Just I'm glad he called in. I'm glad <laughs> he we, called in. I just we did an episode on Vegas, right? Oh. Yeah, we did. Yeah, you wore okay. a fun shirt. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, could I could have worn a jersey? Mm-hmm. Oh, I could have worn a jersey too. Yeah, you should be a wear fair weather friend and put it on right now. The last three minutes of the podcast. Hmm? Yeah. My my what? Korean baseball jersey. Oh. So you, I'm with that hat and those shorts and a Korean baseball jersey, I think you're an Olymp Biscuit cover band. This is fucking oh nuts. Gosh. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Your Korean baseball jersey. <laughs> you suck. What kind of person are they you? Had, uh, Korean baseball games are great because those like they do the beer chugging thing. It's all just chicken and beer at the baseball stadiums. I like that. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, it's a great they, like it's really fun. Yeah, and we go to we go well, to like, let's go to a Korean baseball game. I'll say like minor league, my like we've been to Hillsborough Hops and they got the Portland Pickles up here. When the stakes are lower, when it's not like millionaires playing oh. for championships, but there's still like something. These kids like, are trying to make ho- it, hoping. But then the stadium even more so has to make it fun to get people to go. It's communal as shit. It's That's great. Lot. Oh, it's a good time. They do wild. I went to a St. Paul Saints game. Yeah. And uh, uh, one of the sponsors was a, uh, or one of the people advertising was an OBGYN. And the promotion they had was in the outfield wall. They had moms throwing babies down to the expecting dads, like like fake little (laughs) dolls and trying to catch them. I was like, this is fucking great. (laughs) You know, and they do what, when, you know who Ted Williams was? He played for the, the Red Sox. Yeah, they like, he's like a head. fan. Yeah, one minor league baseball team did Ted Williams night, and they just made popsicles with Ted Williams' head. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they have uh, out here in uh, in Coney Island the Brooklyn Cyclones. Yeah, they do they do Seinfeld night, which is a good time, and they also. Um, 
Uh, maybe it's the, maybe it's another team, but their their mascot is just a slice of pepperoni pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Discovering minor league baseball is like finding punk rock in high school. We're like, it is. Wait, it's this so... isn't what's on TV or what everybody yeah. like wears the the merch for. This is just ridiculous and fun. Yeah. Like that's yeah. and they're kids, you know. Like they're they're yeah. having a, like they're like some of it is so great. Yeah, mm-hmm. and uh. Yeah, it's it's very. Uh, I got on the uh, kiss cam at that game. Mm-hmm. Uh, were you, were you uh, by whatever. yourself? No, I was with a, I was with a, a, uh, an ex, and uh, uh, we leaned in for the to... smooch. We leaned in for the smooch, and then I just uh, licked her face on the side. Oh. It, was a good, it was a good laugh. <laughs> Do they ever just point the kiss cam at somebody alone just to see what happens? Oh, no. no. Uh, never mind. Edit, 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 edit all that. Uh, also, also, yeah, I guess Vegas is Vegas airport's pretty crazy. Yeah. I was watching some fucking sitcom. He was like, I was going to propose to her at a Dodgers game, and the kiss cam came on, but then I just went for the laugh and kissed the old guy next to me instead. <laughs> <laughs> which, uh, which, uh, I mean, I'll, if I get the opportunity, I'll do it. Okay, here's our next and final call. Hey, Shane and uh, Kyle. This is about the uh, Johnny Come Whiteleys. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, you shouldn't have to be there at the uh, of anything to consider yourself a fan of that. And gatekeepers and people who love gatekeeping kind of all suck, so... We don't need any more of those in our lives, so hey, if we're a fan and you're into it and you honestly dig it, cool. Same time, if uh, the Kardashians want to kind of get some street cred because they're wearing a Slayer t-shirt, that's a little bit less than ideal, but <laughs> you take the good and the bad, I guess. Shout out to Dirtnet. Kyle, I hope you and Rachel are dealing with the grief of uh, losing a family member like that. Good, Thanks good. for everything, guys. Thanks, man. Wow, that we he got. We don't pre-screen these calls. He got to the Kardashians wearing a Slayer thing before, uh, after we did, yeah. or before we did, because he called yeah. in. Thank you for the respect on that critter. We're doing all right, and uh, yeah, I think that's a good. That's like a. That's just a good call. That's a nice call. Yeah, we got, that's a nice way to end. Also, Las Vegas. There's your Las Vegas. Also, also uh, check out our YouTube. Click like and subscribe, and if you don't, fuck you. We need diehards, dude. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, the Nafties are diehard fans. Nafties? They're called Nafties now? That's what I'm calling them. Because we get nafty. <laughs> oh, God. We're getting the new Rick and Morty kind of vibe. <laughs> <laughs> we need jokes that are inside jokes that are inside other jokes. Yeah. That's how we and know then- who real fans are. And then one of us needs to yell at our wife in a public setting. Okay. Was that what happened with him? I don't know. Oh, I'm not a fan that. of that. Where are we going to be at coming up, Shane? Where are you living? Uh, your life? I am going to be at the uh, Moon Tower Comedy Festival this coming week. I will also be in uh, Richmond, Virginia at the Same Man Comedy Club. And then Ooh, for the very first time, I'll be headlining Comedy Works in Denver the 17th through the 20th of May. <sighs> I'm real excited about that. And it'll be at Limestone Comedy Festival with somebody else, maybe. Mm-hmm. We're going to be at Limestone Comedy yes, Festival. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. What are we yes, gonna we do? are. Well, should we defend John Cougar Mellencamp on his home turf? Mm. Yes. Maybe just we'll just defend chain smoking. He's a big fan of that. <laughs> uh, I'm going to be in New York City at the Bell House May 4th for two shows. White Somebody Eagle Hall in Jersey City on May 5th. Nowhere in Manhattan. Suck it, Manhattan. Um, and then the Vermont Comedy Club, May 11th through the 13th. And then if you're in Oregon, I'll be at the McMinnville UFO Festival May 19th yes. and 20th. That thing is fun. <laughs> I'm very excited for that one. Oh, my God. You got to do the things that keep you sane. You got to do the things that keep you sane. (laughs) If you're closer to Portland, I'm getting a colonoscopy on May 25th. (laughs) And I'm going to need a ride home. Apparently, they're going to dope me up pretty good, so I'm going to need a ride home. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I, think Ray, I think Rachel's out of town. They won't let me. T- they won't let you take a lift or an Uber from the clinic. That's all. I got to pack oh. up instructions. 
Also, just a thanks to everybody who came out for the special and uh, the taping, and it, it means a lot. Uh, so I appreciate it, and it'll be out at some point. Uh, we're gonna do the edit soon, and check out Kyle Kinane's Shocks and Struts. I really enjoyed it. Thanks, mm. buddy. It's on YouTube. Yeah. yeah. No gatekeeping on YouTube. Everybody can get at it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, as always, <laughs> thanks to Charlene. And Buster, her new dog. We love it so much. Uh, Tune in again next week when Kyle and I defend the military industrial complex. Oh, we're doing that again? Yeah, wow. (laughs) I think it's fun. We keep touching on that. I don't know. Who gives a shit? Uh, Uh, Or, hey, we'll defend the school-to-prison pipeline. All right, everybody, we'll catch you next week. (laughs)